Dreamer's Den, a podcast about daring to dream, with host Brad Robbins. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Dreamer's Den, where we examine and explore the stories of those who have dared to dream. We're podcasting today from Dreamer's Den HQ. Uh, Whether you're listening in your favorite podcast platform or watching via video on YouTube, we're glad you're here. I'm joined today by one of my favorite people, Lizzie Heaps, also known as the Food Nanny. Lizzie, (laughs) welcome to the podcast. Brad, I'm so excited. So like, glad you're here. The minute you asked me, I'm like, of course, Brad, I'm coming. Well, and you were you were absolutely on my short list of people that had to be in season one. That's so nice. As the keeper of Kamut, <laughs> you know, you're you're the the owner of social media's favorite cows. Oh yeah. And at the end of the day, you're just a person that likes to lounge by the pool. <laughs> exactly. You, you just enjoy the simple things of life. It's true. Which, it's is, true. which is amazing. Mm-hmm. So tell us about this this beautiful place that you live. I mean. We, we've seen it on social media. It just mm-hmm. It's this beautiful farm. Oh, gosh. It's not a beautiful farm, bro. Well, it looks like well, a beautiful farm. Well, it's pretty, but I mean, I'm, I'm working on it, okay? I'm finally getting a barn this month and whatever, but I was raised in that home. So that is my childhood home. And the funniest part is, is I always told my mom, I was like, I will live here one day. And I never dreamt that it would actually happen. I basically kicked him out. And I now live there. (laughs) And I love it. I think it's a beautiful, I love to be in the country. I love to bring the action to me, you know? And then I've never had, I wasn't raised with cows. I wasn't raised with farm animals. And all of a sudden I got into that. And so it's the perfect spot. I love it. So at what point do you go from not being raised with cows and animals to all of a sudden (laughs) managing a farm, basically? Well, I went to a friend's farm And well, I was obviously raised up there in the country. So like I had childhood friends that had big dairies, you know, that their dads, that was their job, right? But I never loved the milk. I was like, like, to be honest, like my one childhood friend, I I think she's still offended by it. I mean, she would pour that raw milk on my cereal and I couldn't eat it. I was like, this is not very good. But then after I um, started Instagram, I went to a friend's farm And she's like, have you ever had this Jersey milk? And I did not know there was a difference in the cow's milk. Did you, Brad? No, I don't even know what Jersey's milk, Jersey milk? Yeah. What is that? (laughs) I have no idea. Brad's just going to make me laugh the whole time. Oh my (laughs) gosh. Okay. So there's different kinds of, you know, cows, right? And so most of our milk comes from the black and white, the Holsteins. Right. But this is Jersey. And so I was so scared. I was like, I don't like raw milk. She made up this fancy drink. I tasted it. And I'm like, this is better than Starbucks. I'm not even kidding. I have heard people from people that have grown up on farms. Like that's one of their favorite things is like fresh milk straight from the cow. It's warm. And I'm just over here thinking, I can't imagine my milk not from a fridge. No, I know. But let me tell you, it's this fancy drink. It's like you put a little bit of cinnamon, you put a little bit of ground cloves, and then, oh yeah, and brown sugar. And then it's getting all frothy. I'm not kidding. It's better than Starbucks. So it's like- It is so good. It's like nature's horchata. Yes. Kind of. It really is. Because I love horchata. Okay, well, you're coming to drink it. Okay, fantastic. It does taste like horchata. It's very close. You will love it. And you're going to drink it straight off Annie's- (laughs) <laughs> okay you heard it here first folks we'll we will make sure we post we'll about be that. posting that <laughs> so i was like this is so yummy and i've been super into like more about what i eat you know and i was learning that this cow's gene has never been genetically modified for over two thousand years and so lactose intolerant can have this milk Wow. Brad. Wow. So I just became obsessed. And so instantly I put on social media. I'm like, you guys, I'm going to buy a cow. And one of the fannies, they're called fannies. They're a food nanny fan. She was like, if you're serious, I have a Jersey farm down here in Utah. So I went and I found her right away. And everybody's like, you have to name her fanny. And I have just, it. it's instantly changed me. Like, I feel like the minute I brought the cow, it was like I was more grounded. I was more, I don't know, like back to the basics. It was weird. Well, there's something, I think there's something to be said for some of, you know, those old, like old school values of just like working with your hands. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's work. Oh, I know. I mean, 
I know. But like we're so connected, like our souls are connected. It's very crazy. But I'm just like, I love to shop. I love to come down here and be fun. But there's something about going back and like it's forcing me to like slow down. And I don't know. I just feel more connected with the land. There's I, something about it. I love camping. And any chance I have to go out into nature, it, 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 it's like this perch. Like when you're out of cell service, and granted, I know that you probably have cell service and all that uh, yeah. and you're on your place, but there is something about being out in nature and reconnecting in a way that, that is kind of almost inexplainable, kind of like you're saying, it's true. Though, right? It's true. It's just a different different mm -hmm. mentality. So how many, how many cows in total? Well, the thing you got to remember that I didn't really realize, she was pregnant, but you have to keep the cows pregnant or they're like a human, they stop producing milk. And I'm like, what? So they have a baby, and then 60 days later, boom, they're supposed to be pregnant again. Wow. And so now there's so many babies. It's getting crazy, Brad. It's that getting is... crazy. But I did just switch over to a mini. There was a guy that was like, I'm moving. I didn't even know there was a mini. She comes right to my hip. It's It feels fake. She feels like a toy. And I'm kind of obsessed because I'm like, you could have a mini in your backyard, Brad. You don't need that much space. I don't I don't know if my backyard would be conducive yes, it to would. a mini. No, it would. Really? I'm not kidding. The mini takes less space. It gives less milk. Like I'm so obsessed and we're going to have a mini baby coming in November. I need I'm to start obsessed. with the garden box first. <laughs> I don't Here's even have thing. a garden, Brad. We I don't know if I've talked about this on on the show or not, but I I can't even keep plants alive every year. I don't know if I should be trusted with an animal yet. Well, I can't do the plants, but I can do the cows. It's amazing that God let me have a kid. Oh my gosh. <laughs> because I can't even manage the plants. <laughs> well, plants are hard. So do you remember do you remember the first time we met? I didn't until you just kind of said and then how yeah, I do. Ironically, on the set of another podcast, I I didn't know who you were. I just remember walking in. I was I was with Shay, my wife, mm -hmm. and she looks over and she's like, "Oh my gosh, look who it is." I'm like, "Who's that?" She's like, "That's the food nanny." I'm like, "What's a food nanny?" <laughs> And all I remember is after that show, as you walked over, I think I think she may have like flagged you down and said, "Oh my gosh, I have, like, I know who you are and everything." Just your your energy was infectious. That's so nice. Like I am convinced that you are where the Energizer Bunny goes to get more energy. I really I I I, I shock myself some days. It's incredible. It's crazy. How? But you need it to keep yeah. the schedule that yeah, you have. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you, you have do. four kids. Yeah, you're doing a million different things some of which we're going to get into right now and it's mm -hmm. not just the food nanny stuff like i mean i guess it's all kind of under that umbrella yeah. right yeah but you've got the cooking side and, and that kind of dream mm -hmm. but there's there's a clothing element there's a, a dough hook element yeah there's a, a pottery element like talk to me about some of those other businesses that maybe those who haven't gone you know a, a, a level deeper from some of the stuff that they may come across organically on social media tell us about some of the other things that you're involved with oh my gosh okay well i don't know i just there's a million things, like you said. I, What I love is that I'm dealing with a lot of other small businesses now, and I'm very proud of that. Like, this started because I needed to, and we can get into that later if you want, you know? But it's like, that's been the amazing part, is they've all naturally come into my path. And I just, I don't think anything is a coincidence anymore. I really don't. And it's just all happened so naturally and at the right time. And so there's just always something new that keeps getting added that I wasn't ready and planning on, right? Like the dough hook guy, the pottery guy. I've got a pottery girl that's, ma you know, making special bowls. That's, a, you know, a whole nother story. But it's just all these different little companies that it's, it's amazing to deal with. I don't know. You got to you got to so tell much, the dough hook story. Like Oh yeah. Cuz I didn't know that until we were just talking before this. That's cool. Yeah, okay. So he um was a welder. I, I, I well he's going to be so mad. What does he call himself? He's like an engineer, okay? Like an engineer. He was doing a lot of different machines for oil companies and he was doing pretty good. And then COVID happened and everything just you know, we all know what happened with COVID and he was near closing his doors. Like it was like everything was done. It was just bad news. And his brother-in-law sent me a DM and I don't even know how. I do all the DMs, Brad, me. 
And I don't even know how I saw it because there's many that get lost. Mm -hmm. I get a ton a day. I'm not going to lie. There's a lot of DMs. So for me to see it at that moment, it's pretty crazy. So I got this DM and he's like, hey, we we had been using a Danish dough cook, but they were cheap, gross, made in china which what are they used for they're they're like a wooden spoon in a whisk all in one so i use it for everything i make all my bread all my cakes all it's the best tool in your kitchen i'm so mad you don't have one i know we need need to fix that should have brought you one (sighs) i will bring you one um anyway so he was like his brother-in-law had been watching me and he said i really think he could make you some like usa you know, kitchen products. And I was looking for something like that. I was like, are you kidding me? I would die to do something like that. So we met up and I said, look, this is like my number one tool right now that everybody is knowing me by this because nobody was really talking about the Danish dough hook. Obviously the Danish invented it and it's been around a long time, but nobody really in America was talking about it. And he was like, okay. So he instantly made that. And just that product alone it's kept his doors open. And then we're now just making tons of kitchen items together. And what I love is that it's here, it's USA. And it's like, people love that. The fannies eat that up. They love supporting these small businesses because we all have a dream, your dreamer's den. It's like, that is the dream, the American dream, right? We're all, it's amazing that we can go and be like, you know what, I'm gonna start doing this, right? And so that's, anyways, that's the story. So yeah, it's crazy. It's been amazing. There's no better feeling than than starting something from scratch or creating something that didn't exist before. Exactly. Seeing it not only come to fruition and maybe to even some degree start to succeed or thrive, yeah. but then most importantly, seeing how that benefited someone else. Oh, yeah. So in this case, the guy who was ready to close up shop and just say, well, I guess this isn't in yeah. my future. And like you said, he, you guys connected 180 yeah. and- yeah. It's been amazing to watch. And now it's the best dough hook in the world. You can do pull-ups on it. It doesn't break. It's got copper on it. It's got my logo on it. No, it's the best thing ever. We have sold over 100,000 of those things That's in the last wild. two years. It's amazing. I feel like we need to start a campaign. The Danish dough hook does that. And it's just you showing all the things you could do with a Danish dough hook. Oh, I know. Outside of okay. making bread. Let's do it. I like the pull-up idea. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so so there, is, there seems to be like this Danish thread so was that, is that? And I didn't even know. Are you Danish? I, I don't even know. But my parents are in um, Sweden right now. And they're like, look at where your ancestors are from. So I guess I have Sweden. I, mean, I don't you've know. You've got the blonde hair. I could see the, the, the Swedish ancestry. Yeah, there. so I guess I got Swedish. I don't know about Danish, but I'm okay. obsessed. I love Scandinavia. I went there yeah. in college. And it was, it was Denmark, Norway, Sweden, and Finland. And I am obsessed with that part of the world. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the it's food, dreamy. the people, um, the the fjords of Norway in particular. Was What'd just, you go for? It was a college performing group. Oh, okay, awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. Wow. Well, so then speaking of Danish, you've got this clothing brand and it's it's spelled H-Y-G-E-E, but it's pronounced... H-Y-G-G-E. H-Y-G... Yeah, G-G. What did I say? I don't know. Oh, whatever. Maybe you said it right. I don't know what I said. <laughs> Well, but it's it's not pronounced yeah. like we would read it. No, it's huga. Huga, which yeah. means what? It just means a lot of things. It's a feeling, right? It's just like happy, cozy, the environment, the lighting. Like it's making a moment, right? So for me, it's become this part of our life with food that brings a lot of comfort. I, I'm all about lighting, cozy lighting, the feeling that from a fireplace or it's just all this yummy feeling, Brad. They is called Huga. I love that. And I feel like we've created some Huga here in the I'm studio. I'm really feeling it. I'm really I mean, feeling I'm a, it. I'm big on lighting. Yeah. Like Me I just, too. The light, ambient lighting affects how you feel. I it's believe true. that. It's totally. true. It's true. Lighting and smells. Mm-hmm. So Yeah. The smell is a part of it too. Yeah. yeah totally. I love that. I love mm-hmm. that. Okay. So we, we're going to get into the food aspect, obviously, the food nanny. But okay. a way to kind of transition us into there, I, I have a little segment that I'm calling theme night throwdown with the food nanny oh okay so this is a segment um that was inspired by your mom's nightly themes uh-huh. from the 70s tell us a little bit about that to give people context around the the nightly themes for the food she would do okay so back in the day when my mom started having her seven children she was like wow the hardest part about dinner is figuring out what to make right? It is. And it's something that we have to think about every single day. So my mom was just like, huh, I wonder what we should do. So she met with a nutritionalist way back in the day. 
And she was like, you need to have a variety of food. You're never supposed to eat red meat back to back, pasta back to back. Like things need to be moving through the body, right? And sometimes you have a more heavier night than you have a more leaner night. Like it's just all about this healthy, well-balanced lifestyle. So my mom came up with it. She was like, I'm going to do theme nights. And it is all I was raised on, and I still go by it. Like, even if I go out to eat, Brad, I'm like, it's Friday night, it's pizza night. If I'm not making it, I'm out eating pizza. Like, it's crazy how obsessed I am with it. But it helps you because so many people are like, you don't really eat your food. You don't, I mean, you wouldn't believe the things that are said. And I'm like, yeah, we do. It's like, but yeah, you can't be eating a heavy chicken Alfredo every night right? It's like, you got to balance it out. So there's theme nights. Do you want to know the theme nights? Well, so I did a little research. On oh, he did theme. Okay. And we're going to dive into a few okay. of them. But one of the things that really resonated with me is I love the idea of having to stick to a pizza theme night every week. Oh, I yeah. love pizza. Oh, and it's like, oh, it's Friday, me? pizza night. Well, sorry, got to go get pizza because always it's Friday. Brad. I yes. love that idea. <laughs> yes. Okay. So this is what we're going to do. So everybody loves to eat good food, mm -hmm. but not everybody loves to cook it. Yeah, and I'm true. sure you've heard every excuse under the sun. Oh, I don't have oh, time. All the time. It's too expensive. This, I mean, there's yeah. a million excuses, yeah. right? Yeah. So one of the things I love to do on the, on this show is is give people practical advice that they can apply and they can stop making excuses because yeah. who doesn't want to eat better or to eat better tasting food? Yeah. And and if we can figure out a way to do it in a way that's not going to either break the bank or save us on our time, even better. So what I want to do is give you a couple of themes, and I just want. I mean, you've prepared a million meals in your life. Oh, yeah. I want you to give me maybe the, the easiest um, meal idea that someone making that excuse would have no further excuse. So, for example, we'll start with, like, I think a relatively easy one. So let's say Mexican food. That's one of the theme nights. Mm -hmm. It's like that's on the menu this week. We'll say it's Tuesday. What is an easy meal that, that comes to mind that's like, okay, you could do this in under 15 minutes, 20 minutes, like... This should be your Mexican go-to. Okay. I was going to give you a pasta, but fine. We'll go to Mexican. It's like the chicken tacos. 20 minutes. Seriously. That takes 20 minutes. And they are the best chicken tacos. The thing about the excuses I hear endless, like you said, but it's like you save money when you cook from home. You're saving a ton of money. Especially now today. Come on. When you go out to eat, how much do you spend? It is it's ridiculous. I know. And these aren't even like fancy sit down restaurants. Okay. Even when I'm now taking the little fam through Chick-fil-A and people are telling me that they can't pay for my commute. I'm like, you just drop $50 on Chick-fil-A for one meal while you get a 25 pound bag of commute. I'm like, don't even talk to me about this. This is the perfect segue into the next category because it's pizza, by the way. We went out to a pizza place and, you know, we got like, I mean, I, I like to get a root beer with pizza. I'm not a big soda guy, but I love root beer with like burgers or pizza. Mm -hmm. So I got a drink. I think we ordered um, maybe some like cheesy bread. Yeah. We got the the little cinnamon sticks at the end and then we got a pizza to split. Yum, yeah. The bill was almost $80. The waiter came back and I said, oh, I'm sorry. I, I only ordered this and this and this. He said, yeah. See? And the look on my face, he, I, he could tell I was like completely shocked. He's like, oh, I can give you the, the, the friends and family discount. Because he could like audibly see, oh, I was like, this is my nuts. my gosh. Well, wait till you have four kids, Brad. That was for two of us. I know, that's what I'm saying. That's wild. So, okay, so, so pizza night, how, how do I prevent pizza saving is so $80? Cheap. Brad, pizza is so cheap. A, your dough basically costs nothing. And then it's like the toppings. I mean, yeah, depending on how fancy we're getting, pizza is nothing to make at home. It's really, when I buy pizza even out, I'm like shocked over the price. It's crazy. But they know people will pay it, Brad, yeah. because most are not making it at home. And that's me. Yeah. Well, we got to start changing that. Well, we're, we're going we're gonna to get there. So, so, okay, you said pasta. I want to go there. So let's go Italian, comfort food, whatever you would classify yeah. your pasta dish. There's so many easy, cheap pastas, but our most popular is called the most Mostacholi. Okay. I'm not and familiar. Brad you would go crazy. It's our homemade Alfredo sauce. And then you can either make a homemade red, but you get a really good red jar one. Like I'm not like a nice one, a Rayos or whatever. And we're not going Prego here, okay? And then you layer it with the um, 
the pasta and mm-hmm. then mozzarella cheese and you just layer it with it's this red and white sauce with the cheese brad it's ridiculously good it's, it's our number one super recipe. fast and easy so fast so fast okay what excuses do we have we don't all right we don't. Okay, we last don't category. anymore. Last category and my favorite category. So I am big on on smoking the meats. I, love I know. Growing. I've been watching you. We're doing ribs tomorrow. Woo. Which who's just coming? Kinda, well, I don't know. Well, we've got some friends coming over. No, oh, it's okay. on Saturday. Oh, okay. Which by the time you listen to this podcast, it'll be long, long since passed. But we're doing ribs. <laughs> and uh, there's something about the process of it. I mean, it takes a long time. I get, I get two messages and two types of messages. One is... I can't believe I'm saying this, but I watched every single one of your stories because there's usually like 30 of them, right? Because mm-hmm. it's a long process. Mm-hmm. And then the other one is like, I would never spend 10 hours of my life doing that. And yet I love it. I, 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 it's a weird, I can't take 20 minutes to make a pasta dish, but I can take seven hours to smoke ribs. Yeah. It's very weird. Well, that's fine. It's your passion. You love it. So let's talk. I mean, do you do, you do a lot of grilling? No. Okay. I'm no not grilling good at all. At grilling. Okay. No. So I'm gonna teach you something then. Yeah. Grilling. Do you guys have I'm, a grill? Yeah. And okay. I got a Traeger. Okay. Perfect. But I'm horrible. Okay. No. Well, this is the easiest, most delicious, simple grilling recipe. Like literally 30 minutes or less, because you gotta like heat the grill up. If you're on a Traeger, it's gonna take a little bit longer. Okay. Crank it up to 500, 450, whatever your grill gets to. The mm-hmm. hottest setting it can go. Mm-hmm. Let it get to temperature. The night before, you're gonna take chicken tenders. You're going to get a gallon Ziploc, and then you're going to get a bottle of the Olive Garden dressing oh, from yeah, just, I've seen know, it. the store. Uh-huh. And you just you just put that chicken in like a marinade with the dressing. Yeah. Let it sit in the fridge overnight. Okay. Then you just take the chicken out, put them on the grill. And then right before I pull them, because you, know, you got to get like what's 165 is like the, the chicken temperature. Yeah, 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 is. meat, yeah. Uh, you just take a little like brush and just like brush a little extra dressing on there. And that's it. And it is... It's amazing. It's incredible. Okay, I'm going to do it. I had no idea. Who taught you this, Brad? It was, I was just <laughs> at a, fr- a friend's barbecue. And he's. I'm like, this is amazing. How long did this take? He's like, oh, I just poured the bottle of this in the bag. I'm like, what? How long does that have to sit in the marinade? It really doesn't, honestly. Oh. If you wanted to just do it like five minutes before, that's fine. I like to complicate things. So why not do it the night before? Let it soak into the meat a little more. Okay. But you could literally do it the day of right before you put it on the grill and be awesome. I'm going to do it. Okay. Okay. We can't wait to see you uh, wait to report see. back. Okay, I will. That's awesome. Okay, so we got some great little meal ideas there. Mm-hmm. I love that, by the way. So I want to get in now to, we kind of like wrap things up here into the food nanny story. Mm-hmm. So for those that are coming across you and your story for the first time, where did the food nanny come from? And just tell us a little bit of the, the backstory behind that. Okay. I honestly, Brad, was never really sharing that story like just not that openly and lately it's like the bigger you grow the harder it actually gets the more hate the rumors like it gets ugly like just being out in the public eye i don't know you probably don't experience that because you're just perfect people people are gonna (laughs) no people are gonna be people that's just the way it works anyway but it's like they think that everything's been so perfect for my entire family and it's like The crazy part is my mom and I both were put in situations where we had to do it. And now, you know, when you look back, you're like, oh my gosh, I know exactly why. So long story short, my dad was a Delta pilot. He was in the Air Force and then he worked um, for Delta Airlines. Delta Airlines, he was a pilot. And he was like about to retire. Everything was going so great in his career. Um, I was the baby of the seven kids. It was like they were ready to be done and sit and fat and happy in retirement. And then 9-11 happened and it rocked everybody's world at that time too. And Delta Airlines went bankrupt at around 9-11. So my dad was forced into early retirement. He lost all of his retirement. So everything that he had worked so hard for in this perfect whatever world that he was going to have it was it was over and it was like my parents are sitting there in their later 50s and they completely had to reinvent themselves and that was hard to watch as a kid like I was in high school but still that was like whoa all right like you've gone from this back down to I don't know anyway my dad was talking crazy talk I'm gonna go start driving truck I was like what oh my gosh he's gonna leave us he's gotta it was crazy stuff and so my mom finally felt like this was my time 
to finally like help the family, even though she had raised the seven kids. I mean, come on, that's a full time job in itself. But she was like, this is time for me to do something. So she decided that she was going to write her whole theme nights, meal planning, because she was always helping families with it. She's like, I'm going to write a cookbook. She's like, this is a dying art, cooking at home, and I'm just going to put this all into a book. She had no clue where how it's going to be published or any of that stuff. So anyways, long, long story short, it all then happened, found a publisher. It's a miracle. And they said, you know what? You're like the Italian version of La Vida Vera. And my mom was like, what is that? And they said, it's the true life. They said, what you've been doing is the true life. And they're like, you're almost... um, like the super nanny show, but you're the food nanny. Mm. So that's where the food nanny name came about. So there was no social media. There was no blogs. There was nothing. And so me being the youngest kid, I was there with my mom. And I went to every event, every church event. And my mom and I are very similar. We sound the exact same. We have crazy high energy, but I'm aggressive. Like, And my mom's like think about it. It's $19. And I'm like, if you don't buy that book that she just worked her butt off for, I'm going to be so mad at you. (laughs) And so I was just with her selling all these cookbooks. And it's crazy. I mean, my mom was like keeping the lights on Mm -hmm. at this point. And that was just really crazy to watch. It was like, wow. I mean, my parents, they are the hardest working people I know honestly. And so then my mom got a little show with BYU TV and then she started having the show and Food Nanny went on for a few years. And then my parents were, my dad started another business. Okay. By the way, this whole time with my brothers, a security business. So he started that business while this was going, but you know what it's like, you know, starting a business off the ground and, and anyway, his business then grew and was becoming good and making money and all these things. And my mom was like, I'm tired. I'm kind of done at the food nanny stuff. So we put it to bed. We said, good night. Like this is done. This is all good. We had sold a lot of the cookbooks, but there were remaining cookbooks that just sat in a warehouse. And my dad's like, if they sell, they sell. We're done. It's good. We, it, it did its thing. So I moved out to Denver Um, for security. My husband was working for my dad's security company. And I went through a really, really hard thing, Brad. Like, I I try to say it without saying it, but I found myself in this, our family was in a horrible financial situation that I had zero clue about, like zero. And I've never hit rock bottom that hard. I had just had my fourth baby and I don't know, it just makes me emotional. It was really hard. It was really hard. And I felt like I had to like soul search almost. It was like, God, you need to help me. Like, what am I supposed to do? Like, I, I need to do something. And it was wild. Like Brad, the answer over and over again came, you have to bring back the food nanny. And I never even thought about the food nanny. And I'm like, what do you mean bring it back? And every time I said it in my head, it was like, I'm not exaggerating. It was this voice of like, it wasn't me. And I heard it over and over again. And um, sorry. Anyway, so I was like, I don't even know what to do. But I was watching all these girls on Instagram. And I'm like, well, why can't I do it? Why, why can't I do that? And the funniest part is, is I thought it was so simple and I've had a harsh, <laughs> I've been very humbled, you know, harsh reality there. I've been very humbled because it's the hardest thing you will ever do is really putting yourself out there and trying to get people to want to watch and grow and, and anyway, all the things, but that's where it started. And so, yeah. I, I love that so much. I'm so sorry I cried. No, I, I love it because it's it's raw, real emotion and passion, right? Yeah. It's, you know, they say <laughs> that you. behind every overnight success, there, there's 10 years of hard work that you'll never, you'll never see. It's true. And, and that is, it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's a podcast, whether it's a music group, whether it's, you know, the food nanny, like it does not matter. Like starting and building and continuing to do everything anything takes the same principles and that's why on this show in particular like it doesn't matter what you do what success you've had what you've built 
I want to talk to you because there are those common threads throughout everything. Like totally, everybody has a rock bottom. Everybody has so true the adversity, the challenges that that most people probably won't know about. Yeah, and, and Brad, I keep saying that necessity. Be, it, you know, they always say necessity becomes the mother of invention. I can't stop saying that quote because I'm like, it did. Like, and now you can look back and you're like, if I wouldn't have gone through that, I would have never done this. Never. I heard a Never. quote that said, as, as human beings, we are absolutely amazing when we have to be. And if only we could choose very to be true. that when we wanted very to true. be. Very true. But it's true. I mean, it's you, you look at true. any inspiring story in history of people who have been through, I mean, I mean, look at the world wars. Look, I mean, you name it. Like there's, there's these unbelievable stories of survival because they had no other option. It's very true. So that that's really, really fascinating. So, so tell me... I mean, gosh, there's there's so many directions I like know, I could take this. But I mean, the, the moment you you decided to do it, like just because you decided to do something and this voice is telling you you need to go do this, that's still the very beginning. Oh, like, yeah. Like what did it look like from that point actually getting it off the ground and moving forward? Well, Instagram didn't have stories back then. It was only lives. And I was like, our personality is what is going to make this grow. It's not going to be a pretty picture. Like a lot of people have very successful Instagrams over this beautiful cake or whatever. I'm like, that is not going to be us. And I knew it right away. So I just propped my phone up. I didn't even have a tripod. And it was a freak show. It was an absolute freak show. The fourth child fell off the couch the other <laughs> kids are not making the school bus i don't even know brad like i i look back and i don't even know how i did it i just i, I mean like what was i thinking i wasn't i wasn't thinking and i said to my parents because there's three other sisters so i had to call them and say hey i'm running with mom's name because when there's already something established like that, I didn't want to start over. I'm like, I'll be Food Nanny Junior, right? Because she already had a little name for herself in cookbooks and things like that. And I was following in her footsteps. And they all just laughed at me. Like, good luck. And I, all of that just fueled my fire even more. I'm like, oh yeah? You want to watch me? I'm going to do it. I'm going to freaking do this. So anyway, I started going live, Brad. And I said, if I don't gain one follower... I'm done forever. And then I just slowly kept growing. Now you have a few followers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I know, I know obviously what drove you to do it out of necessity. Yeah. I mean, desperation, whatever you want to call it. Like you had 100%. no other option but to succeed. But now, like I said, all that is behind you, the hard work, the overcoming, the challenges it's still a grind to keep going. Brad, Even it's when a, things are good. Totally. It's a whole different animal. You have the animal that you're worried about just getting it off the ground. And now it's like, okay, it's going, but now you have a store. Now you have employees. Now you have all this overhead. Like, Brad, things I didn't think about, okay? Like, I, I say this example, but I can't stop talking about it. It's funny. Like when I now go to Chick-fil-A, I've mentioned Chick-fil-A, sorry, twice, but I obviously like it. But I'm like, so how much do they make at the end of the day? After paying their employees, deducting the sauce, deducting the cups, deducting, like this is now the way my brain works. It's it's a whole different thing. And so, yeah, I mean, yes, are you making a name for yourself and all these things? But I get frustrated sometimes, like I've said to my dad before, like how many times can I talk about commit? Like how many times? But do you know what he said to me when I was losing it back then? He's like, Lizzie, how famous and popular is McDonald's? He's like, how many millions do they bring in a day? They still have advertisement everywhere. He's like, they've got billboards everywhere. They've got commercials everywhere. And something really changed in me when he told me that a few years ago when I felt like I was just this over and over like, you know, broken record. And I'm like, you're so right. Because there's always new and people love it in their face. Like, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I'm being serious. Mm -hmm. Like, Yes, I sell on the daily now on my own and people go into the, my store like without. But the minute, Brad, I post stories, it's double for the day. 
The mm. cells are double, quadruple. It's this infomercial in front of the face that the people love to have the reminder. I don't know. So, so what, yeah. what's the why today and how is it different from the why when you started? I think the why today is like, whoa, like uh, now it's it's just bigger than myself. It's not just for me anymore. I think in the very beginning, selfishly, yeah. <laughs> it was for myself. And I did want to repay my parents back um, because we went into partnership, obviously. It was like they inventory and the flower came about and all that stuff. And so I couldn't have done it without them. And, um, but it was like, I have to do this for me and my family. And now it's like, oh, wow, this is bigger than you. I love now that. Now you've got other companies. So. Well, and now you're, you're transferring all those things that, that you grew up enjoying, whether it's the theme night, whether it's, I mean, I, I, I we, we didn't get into this, but I know, you know, you talk about the lost art of family dinner. Oh, it's and, so lost even more today. Yeah, it's sad. And, and and I'm I'm as bad as any of them. But that was one thing that my parents were actually really really good good about. And and it is amazing, right? It's never it's not even about the meal. It's about the time and that exactly. time repeated consistently over time that you look back and you're like, oh, that was actually really a powerful thing to grow up with. There's so many studies out there, and Brad, it's the most natural setting for your family, and. Even more now today where I'm just like running a thousand miles a minute, it's the only time where I finally sit down, take a breather, and I can actually like, that's where my kids feel important. Really, you can look at each one of them in their eyes and be like, let's hear about your day. You have to give your kids a moment in the day like that. There have been wild experiences that have been shared around my dinner table just with my little kids already so far. So yeah, it's more than the food. I want to be eating good food at that table, Brad, but it is, it's not just about the food. It's more important. I mean, it it really is. It's one of the most important things you can do in the day. I love it. Really, that. really is. I love that. Well, this has been so awesome, Lizzie. The last thing I want to do with you is a little segment we call the Dreamers Digest. Mm -hmm. And I just want you to distill down for me if if the Lizzie today could go back to the Lizzie that was in that challenging situation that you described and got teared up over earlier. Mm -hmm. And you could impart to her words of wisdom, words of encouragement, knowing what you know now, but didn't know then about what was ahead, what would be required and what was possible. What would you say to that Lizzie? Gosh, I've never been asked that. I really think that, I don't know if I've ever, well, I think in the beginning I didn't believe in myself, you know? I, I I don't know. I just, if I could go back, I would just be like, no, trust yourself a little bit more. Like, you know what you're doing and you're smart. You're doing it. Like, I don't know. Does that make sense? I don't know, like Brad. A, like a friendly reminder that like, look, like you're... You, like can be, you, you can it. be amazing when you have to be. Yeah. And, and now you have to be, yeah. so let's go. Yeah. I just think I would have totally... Um, oh, and I would go back into the beginning and everything used to just be so hard. Like if I ever got a hurtful comment or, you know, whatever. People, like I said, they're ruthless on there. I would take that so personal and it would just wreck me. I mean, it's amazing how many nice comments you can get. And then the one comment can just spiral you down into like doubting yourself, thinking you suck, you know, all these things. I... I don't care now. And I genuinely, genuinely can say that. And I wish I could have taught myself that the five and a half years ago. Just, ugh, just be you and forget the losers. My daughter and I love to watch <laughs> Wreck-It Ralph or it, oh, the, the second one, Ralph Breaks the Internet. Oh, yeah. And one of my favorite scenes is when, you know, he's, he's flying high, he's getting all the hearts and he goes into the comment room and... Uh, Oh yeah. The the little I think I think think her name her character name is like algorithm actually. She comes in she's like never read the comments. It's true. It's like the sad reality. It's true. Well, that is so awesome. Once again, everybody, you've been listening to Lizzie Heaps, the food nanny here on the Dreamer's Den podcast. Lizzie, where can people find you and where can they learn more? So, I'm on Instagram, the food nanny. 
I mean, I'm on Facebook too, but no, it's mostly Instagram. So yeah, just come. I mean, every day I'm trying to get you to be inspired, to want to get in the kitchen, to make the bread, make the food for your family. And um, hopefully, yeah, you you want to come join <laughs> i love it so much oh, Brad. well this has been so awesome if you've enjoyed today's episode we invite you to give us a follow across all social media including facebook twitter instagram linkedin youtube you get the idea it's all at dreamers den podcast and you can listen to all of our episodes by subscribing wherever you get your podcasts and while you're at it don't forget to rate and review the podcast with not, which not only um helps improve the quality of the show but help us reach more listeners so on behalf of the entire dream team i'm brad robbins reminding you to work hard as lizzie reminded us be kind and always dare to dream <laughs>